Oh, they are ready, ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Woo wee. God is so good. I love the worship here. They sang a song. These songs are different than, you know, they're not those old time songs. They're like right on right now. Let's get with the program. Wow. That's, I'm fighting a battle. You have already won. Well, that's Jesus. I'm fighting a battle. Jesus has already won. Well, we're going to get that down a little bit deeper in your spirit today. Because I'm talking about the manifestation of the sons of God. And, ooh, that's powerful. That's you. That's you, guys. We're sons of God. That's what happens when we're born again and we enter in. You know, he was the son of God. And we are sons of God. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. Well, I'm, it, it's, you know, this is the heart of God. He loves his children. How many know God loves his children? Hmm? So I'd like you to stand up a minute. Raise your hands. And please, please help this little preacher girl. To deliver the heart of God tonight, today, because his heart is for you. Wholeheartedly, he's waiting for each and every person to deliver a corner of their heart, whatever that is that he's looking for. Just allow him to go there. Thank you, Jesus. Say with me, thank you, Jesus, for your heart. For your children in this hour we love you too we love you father we thank you for the holy spirit and thank you mostly jesus for saving us anoint this girl to deliver your message in jesus name amen <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. God is so good. Okay. Well, you know, Catherine Kuhlman, how many of you heard of her? Yeah. Ah, she's my hero. She uh, talked about the manifestation of the sons of God waiting for a time, hmm, a time that this would happen. So what is the manifestation of the sons of God? Hmm? What, what's that word manifestation? Huh? Revealing, revealing, absolutely exposing who's who. Isn't that right? Are you getting to see in the world now that there's bad guys and good guys? Yeah, you got that? Okay, who's the good guys? We are the Christians. All right. We have two covenants, the old covenant with the Jews and the new covenant with the born-again believers. All right. We are the people of God, God's people, God's children. You see, he makes it real personal when he says, my kids, my children. That's personal. All right, this isn't just any old thing. This is the father's heart for his kids, his family. He considers you family, all right? We can't stay at a distance anymore. We're going to go, Abba, Abba, Daddy, Daddy, I need you. Hallelujah. And more and more as the day approaches. And he might even bring up a little word like suffering. Oh, ouch, ouch, ouch. No? But he says, in the suffering, you're going to come to know me intimately. See, everything we're learning right now is about intimacy with God. You can't stand at a distance anymore and be religious like those Pharisees. You can't. Because he's drawing us in. A lot of people have gone to heaven. A lot of people went to heaven with COVID. Isn't that something? 
And he said there's going to be earthquakes and all kinds of things going on. All right? But he's got you in the palm of his hand. He is not forgetting your name or where you live. Thank you, thank you. He was talking to me this morning. Jerry and I were talking about, by the way, Jerry and Linda are my very good friends of many, many years. They live in Chelsea, a little bit down the road there. And uh, you want to stand up and say hello? Yeah, it's okay. They're preachers, evangelists, and missionaries. See, we have the same heart. I, I, met, I met Linda when I was uh, at a, what do you call those places? A storage unit, yes. <laughs> I was at a storage unit packing all my stuff into a little bit of cubicle. I'd come back from Peru, and I was pulling it out and sorting it out. And, you know, it'd been a year or whatever, you know, time. Sometimes it's a year. Sometimes it's two. Some, last time it was three and a half years before I got back. But things happen, you know. <laughs> but anyhow, she said, you know what? I have a closet. <laughs> You're welcome to come to my house and put all your things in my closet, and you won't have to pay for this storage unit. I said, Golly, thank you. And that's how I met them. Isn't that amazing? So, you know, they, Jerry and Linda have been evangelists all over the world. They have been in Africa. They've been in how many countries? 16 different countries. He's got all the stats on this. I don't. But, uh, but they know what I'm talking about. You know, missionaries do go through things. But it's fun, you know. Hey, guys, young people especially, it's fun. Uh, because, you know, you never know what God's up to. He's doing new things all the time. He's doing new things with me. Uh, he's doing new things with a lot of you. A lot of you are in change right now. And change is good. Don't be afraid of it, you know. We have to move into it with the grace of God. And uh, God's power, of course, is more than enough. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's get on with it. Hallelujah. Let me put on my dollar store magnifying glasses. <laughs> no, God has healed me. Hallelujah. Completely. Uh, actually. Okay, let's open up to Romans 8. You know Romans 8. That's the chapter where Everything is explained in the New Testament about who you are and what you have. If you have not meditated, meditation means you read it over again and again and again, praying in tongues because you want to deliver it from his spirit to your spirit. That's what tongues is all about, by the way. It's a gift of God, the first gift that he gave in Pentecost, so that everybody's eyes would open and they begin to see in the spiritual world. Is that good or not? That's real good. So a lot of people, when they first get it, they go, oh, this is ridiculous. I don't know what this means, you know. But God knows what it means. And he talks to your spirit. He talks to my spirit. Because we're spirit beings now. Do you know God is a spirit? Have you heard that? God is a spirit. That means you, as a son of God, what are you? You're a spirit. Son of a gun. You know? And that spirit man inside of you, I call it the new nature. Because when you're born again, you get to uh, discover what's going on. You know, and it's kind of a process where he begins to reveal in you what is happening uh, or what happened to you when Christ took a seed. Christ is the seed and placed it in your heart. And that seed now is growing. Huh? And we're coming about to be manifested as who we are who are we sons of god i'm a son of god confess it come on i'm a son of god thank you father i'm a son of god i'm a son of god hallelujah that son is sons and daughters by the way <laughs> that includes me 
Hallelujah. Sonship, inheritance, is for the sons of God. Think about that a minute. Sonship, inheritance, is for the sons of God. So he set aside for you an inheritance that is supernatural, that is from Abba Father, huh? and it's glorious. In fact, you could call it glory. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes I think about that. What the heck is glory, you know? You, uh, I know it caused Isaiah to fall on his face and Moses to fall on his face before him. And when that glory shows up, I know it's pretty powerful stuff, you know. But that glory is our inheritance. Wow. We're going there? Uh-huh. We're going there. Isn't that good? Okay. Romans 8. 19, verse 19 says, the earnest expectation of the creature, or what you can say um, creation, all of creation, waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. Wow. So what's he waiting for? Right. So he's waiting He's waiting on what? You. You and me to manifest. What do we need right now in America more than anything else? Yeah. And how's that going to happen? When you stand up and say, I'm a son of God. Hallelujah. These are the days that Catherine Kuhlman was talking about right now. You're standing in it. The water is risen, and, and this is the water. It's all around us. Huh? Step into the water. That's my revival. And it's going to bring life into all those little trees, all those sons of God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Is this not good? Well, if Catherine Coleman was waiting, she waited a lifetime for that, then I think it deserves a little bit of our attention also, huh? You think? So let's find out what this means to manifest. Oh, my gosh. You want me to manifest? I don't know about that. <laughs> let's go over to 1 Corinthians, which is a little basic. 2 Corinthians is a little bit more uh, mature, you might say. First Corinthians 2, 4. My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Did you get that? I have to say it again. My speech, my preaching, is not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration, I love that word, demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And I think this is critically important for this time right now. Because there are some people who think they're pretty smart. There's some religion and some churches that think they got all the programs just all set down the way it's supposed to be. And they don't want you disturbing anything. And there's people who think they know it all. In the world and also in the church. So, these are the times of the manifestation of the sons of God. Who's going to do the manifesting, huh? We're going to get manifested. We're going to get revealed, exposed for who we are. Are you really a son of God? Show me. Huh? Are you getting it, guys? If you really are a son of God, I want to see it. The world's going to prove you in this. So these are the times. 
that we have to, we have to draw close in intimacy with our Father and say, Father, what do I need to do to manifest? What do you want from me? Okay. Now, each and every one of you have gifts differently as, as the Holy Spirit gives them out. And he's given out some awesome gifts in this church. I can tell you I've been receiving them. Woo, and I love it. Gifts of prophecy, you know, gifts of worship. That prophetic worship is coming forth. It's awesome. But it's coming from everywhere. You know, I was referring to the young people. I don't know why I keep wanting to look at you, the group of young people over here. <laughs> but you're very special. You see, the, the young people today are not like any other generation. They have had battle from day one. First of all, like Jesus, there's abortion. They're trying to kill you before you even get out of the womb. Then you got to go through all kinds of spiritual warfare. Some people are, some of these little kids are seeing demons when they're just in the crib, <laughs> you know, and demons walk into their room manifesting demons, terrible things, you know, and then, then they got to go through all that puberty stuff, you know, which is kind of hard on anybody, <laughs> you know, trying to sort out those emotions and the physical body changing and who's my partner and who isn't and uh, is this person being honest with me or they're trying to trick me and, you know, this generation has been through it is what I'm trying to say. So I applaud you. Stand up, please. Stand up. Come on. If you're young and you're, you're moving into it, we applaud you. We applaud you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for moving in because it's not easy and we recognize that. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're here. And all the other young people in this church, you know, I've been in Peru 40 years, a long time, at least a generation. And... Uh, the Lord told me two things before I came home this trip. Uh, he said, I want you to set the young people in order because they're going in. They're going in. Hallelujah. And they're bold and they're strong and they're prepared. They are awesome. They don't even know it yet, but they're manifesting hallelujah glory to god and i'm excited i'm excited in peru mostly the churches that i'm uh ministering to are, are all young people they were coming in from uh you know peru's in south america they were coming in from venezuela they were coming in from bolivia they were coming in from ecuador they're coming in from brazil they're coming in from all over and it's wonderful we brought the gospel we, I say the United States, brought a lot of the gospel to South America from North America. And we planted seeds and did those things and worked hard, you know. But now it's time for them to pick it up and take over and go on. Yeah. And uh, they are doing it. Hallelujah. Uh, others are following. But this, gen this, the Lord told me this. He said, your generation... And that young people, the next generation coming up, are going to join together. Because, you, frankly, he said to me, it isn't enough to bring revival. Just you. We need them. We cannot do it without them. Together, he's got two generations. I think first time in history that they were coming in perfect agreement to move forward and bring this harvest, which is really the gospel going out in all the earth. You know, you see the nations are getting ready, don't you? Huh? There's a rant. There's, there's the whole shift in the world. You can't ignore it. It's everywhere. You know, they're Iran, Iraq, Syria. There's countries I didn't even know existed. They're out there, you know, and they're people, you know, and, and then the Lord talks to me and he says, I got my people over there, you know. Okay, and we're going to meet them. As missionaries, we delight in this, you know, to meet the new people and, and other cultures. You know, we just love to do that. But uh, 
but he has a plan to bring the gospel to all the world. And it's going to be soon. It is not a long time away. Okay, so we're getting ready. And that's why I'm talking to you about the manifestation of the sons of God. This is a heavy subject, believe it or not. For me, it's very heavy because it is the heart of God. Hallelujah. So he wants us to walk in demonstration, right? Second Corinthians said, not with enticing words of man's wisdom. That's not religion. That's not uh, degrees from the university. I have degrees, you know. I'm a, I was trained as a medical doctor, and I went to Baylor um, College of Medicine, and um, I'm actually 12 universities, so the major part of my life was in, you know, university. But um, he took it a different way. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you know, he developed in me a servant's heart. And from that servant's heart, um, I got to do what I love to do, which is minister to people. My speech, my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration. Now, that word demonstration, you know, it says something very specific. And then it says, of the spirit and of power. Now, I have to tell you something about that word spirit. Because spirit, in, uh, in the dictionary or anywhere in the Bible, can mean two things. It can mean the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. Or it can mean you, your born-again spirit, as a son of God. Huh? I call it the little s, you and me, and the big s, the Holy Ghost. Amen? Okay, so we have to discern in our spirit when the scripture talks about spirit, are you talking about me or are you talking about the Holy Ghost? And that's pretty easy for me to decide because the Holy Ghost is God and I'm not. Amen? So who is he working on? The little us, us, exactly. Uh, who's going to manifest? Us. God don't need to manifest, you know. He's, he's already, he is who he is. <laughs> we fall on our face, oh God, you know. But uh, so right here, what is the word spirit? Demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. Is he talking about the Holy Ghost getting power? No, he's talking about us getting power. Isn't he? The Holy Ghost already has power. He's God. Amen? So we're not to be using the world's way uh, of enticing words of wisdom, tricking people, uh, you know, manipulating the word. And then he says your faith. He's working on your faith because everything we receive and do is by faith. Is that not right? Believing in him, trusting in him, relying on him. Him meaning Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the big S. Amen? Amen? Got me? Are you following me? Okay. Seven. Mm, or we can go down. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God what in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Now, what is that? Got a clue? I love the gift of tongues. When you speak in tongues, you don't know what the heck's going on. <laughs> Having a clue. But boy, it just seems to pop up out of our spirit. You know, sometimes we get into warfare and sometimes we're just in love, you know. But our spirit is expressing itself, manifesting itself. And we learn to discern is what the, what the scripture says, discern. What's discern? Well, we capture it in a way that's not through our carnal mind. We capture it in our heart. We begin to be led by our spirit, by our new nature, by that seed that Jesus put inside of us. It's developing and it's learning.
to walk like our Father walks, like Jesus walked. We're becoming a son of God. Did you get that, guys? Raise your hand if you got that. Okay, thank you. You guys have wonderful teaching here, so I know you do have this. Okay, so as you know, I love praying in tongues, and I pray in tongues all the time. Some people prayed in tongues for a little while, and they said, that's ridiculous, I don't want to do this no more, and they gave it up. I encourage you to please keep going. Go back. Get in with God, because when you take time to stay in the presence of God, to get in the presence of God and stay in the presence of God, he starts moving and manifesting. And you need this manifestation because it doesn't come from you. James says all wisdom comes from above. It doesn't come from our little brain. No, it doesn't come from the world. You know, the world has its way of talking and doing things, and I'm not against education because you know it's been half of my life even more uh, in university. So, you know, I have my degrees and all of that stuff. Actually, I've had two careers, but I won't go into all of that. Uh, it's good to have education. I love it. I totally enjoyed education, and I, I love to learn more all the time. But... When you learn from God, it's different. You know, it's directly from above to your spirit. From the big S to the little S. Huh? Isn't that good? Okay, so we're manifesting the sons of God. Let's go to Romans 8.13. And 14. I love Romans 8, uh, 13 and 14 says, If you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We teach, I teach, um, Meditation and assimilation as a tool that God uses to bring out those hidden mysteries. Um, pray in tongues, but then you learn to wait. You learn to wait on God. You just get quiet and let him talk to you and deposit in you what, in what he needs to deliver to you as a son. Glory to God. Okay, so if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Okay, what's it mean to live after the flesh? Mm, think about it. It says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of your body, you shall live. Now, that word spirit, is that a big S or a little s? Hmm? It's a little s, but it, it don't look like it at first, but once you meditate the whole of the chapter uh, 8, Romans 8, you'll find out, oh, he's talking about me. Oh, he's talking about the Holy Ghost. In fact, he makes it very clear in Romans 8, when 16, it says the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You see? It's not hard to understand the scriptures if you stay there and pray in tongues and let him deliver it to you because that hidden wisdom is for the sons of God. That's how we develop. That's how we grow. And it's so good because when you don't see what's going on, he does, and he's taking his children, and he's saying, come here, you know, I want to show you something. And then he does this all the time through our lives, and it's so wonderful. It's so good to be under his wings in the bosom of the Father, you know, where he's teaching us and showing us things. It's a love relationship, brothers and sisters. He loves you so much. That's why I said, please pray that I can deliver the heart of God because 
you know, I just break down when I think about how much he loves you. He'll go to the ends of the earth, and he did. He did just for you, just for you. So don't take them too lightly. It's really important now that we learn to manifest, the let him manifest our sonship. Because, why because? Because the world needs to see it. The world is looking, their, their heads are being raised up in Iran, in Syria, in uh, every nation in Lebanon. They're, well, you know, our God versus their God. Who's your God? Your God is a God of violence and death. Our God is a God of life and love. Come on, is this a difficult choice or what? Hallelujah. But they got to see it, guys. They have to see it in you. They have to see it in every one of us. It's important that we walk the way Jesus walked. Oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Because that's what he's forming in you. That's what he's manifesting in you is that very personality that Jesus had. All right. And so we're going to go into that a little bit more. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 13, 14. Luke 17. All right. Luke 17. We're going to the Gospels and, and Jesus teaching. Um, you know, those four gospel where he shows us. He, Jesus has a different way of teaching than the Holy Ghost uh, working through others. Like Paul, you know, he had a different way of teaching. But it's all truth, and it all uh, supports one to the other. You know, if, if you want to know if you're, if you're making a right conclusion or not, it, does it, is it confirmed in the entire Scripture, Old Testament and New Testament? That's our test. You know, a lot of people start connecting dots, and they connect them wrong. It's easy to do that in the carnal mind, you know, but we have to pray in tongues and let God put the things together. I said, okay, I don't get it. Okay, I, I don't get it, God. Show me. Do that with God. Let him show you. Let him reveal to you uh, truth because he's, he's, I'll tell you, this word is awesome, and it will, it will show you right or wrong and approve you in it. Hallelujah. Luke 17 talks about um, an unprofitable servant and a profitable servant. Now, I want you guys to manifest because God wants you guys to manifest. Uh, and the world needs to see the sons of God, who they really are. Are you, are you one of those trickery kind of religious people? Or are you truly a son of God that moves out of love and righteousness? Amen? Okay. So Luke 17, 10 says this. Where is it? Does he thank? Okay. Let me, let me go back just a little bit. Okay. Now he's talking here. Let me just set this up. In uh, 17, 6, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and, it, and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Okay. And then he goes in to say, which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say to him by and by when he has come from the field, go and sit down and eat? Or will he not rather say to him, make ready wherewith I may eat and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drinking and afterward you shall eat and drink? Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. That's old English. <laughs> no, I don't think so. So likewise, you, when you have done all those things which are commanded of you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. This is hard to say, guys. But up until now, we've done that only which was our duty. It's our duty to go to church and give thanks. It's our duty to help our neighbor. It's our duty to give people the gospel. It's all our duty. And what does he call it? Unprofitable. Ouch. 
You're still unprofitable. You and I are still unprofitable when we're doing those things which are required and normal for anybody working out in the field. Amen? Okay. All right. Verse 14, let's go down a little bit. Now, this is interesting because he go, uh, you know, sometimes we take the, especially the Gospels, we'll take it and put it in pieces because we don't understand the whole message. I encourage you to meditate and assimilate the whole Gospel. Don't pick it apart and say, well, this is for that and this is for that. You know, and now he's talking to me, and then he was talking. You know, it's all one message, and it all fits together perfectly. So what's happening here? Jesus is teaching. All right, the apostle said, this is in verse 5, the apostle said unto Jesus, increase our faith. Okay, so he started uh, telling them about the grain of mustard seed. Okay. That's the kind of faith you need, and, it, and it's powerful, he said. It's powerful, all right? But then he said, you got to do more because you're unprofitable for me. You're, we are still unprofitable, guys. I hate to say that. I, mean, with, I had to say this to myself, but we're still unprofitable unless we're walking in power and demonstration of love. And it's going out and changing people's lives. We're still unprofitable. Religion is just not enough. Unfortunately, most of us have been raised in religion. We're doing all the right things. And a lot of people are self-justifying, saying, oh, yeah, I'm a good person. I did all the right things. But are you walking in power? Are you able to pray for the sick and see them healed? Are you obeying God immediately? Huh? You see, there's more. Right now, and this happened through that uh, one that gave me the prophecy, you will be born again, again. Huh? But I already got saved, born again. I got transformed. But, Again, I'm pouring out my spirit on you. I need you to be profitable now. I need this generation and your generation to come together and do my will. Be like I was. Walk like I walked in demonstration and in power. That's for everyone. It's not just for that evangelist that comes to town once in a while. You hear me? That's for everyone. Let me tell you, when the love of God hits someone who has never known love, it changes. When those two Iranians came up to me in the Miami airport and they said, do you know him, the God of love? Uh-huh. And I prayed for them, and guess what? They're not the same. They are not the same. Do you hear me? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. It doesn't have to be with, with a lot of fanfare and trumpets and drums. And, you know, It can just be the real thing maybe, huh? And it changes people. The love of God changes people. It breaks them on the inside. They're no longer the same. I've never broken relationship with that with those two two guys from Iran because they know. Now they know. Before they didn't know. But they got their questions answered and now they know that they know. The God of love met me. And I'm accepted in the kingdom. And I don't have to follow that hatred. I don't have to follow Allah, you know, whatever that was going on with them. And that's why the people of Iran are rising up right now. They've got a leader that's bullying them. Russia has a leader that's bullying them. And the people are rising up and say, hey, that's not what we asked for. 
that's not what we want. But that boldness, they have to see in us first. You get that? We've got to show them who God really is by our walk. You are the sons of God. You are manifesting your love for others when you obey God, when you hear him and obey him, okay? Walking in the spirit means that you are being ruled by your new nature and what you're receiving from God. When he speaks, you recognize it. Oh, that's you, Father. Okay, I'll do it. And it might be crazy, <laughs> you know, go and spit on that guy's eyes. No, I don't think so. <laughs> but, you know, if it's God, all right, we're going to obey him. <laughs> God does crazy things these days, I'm telling you. <laughs> I really wasn't expecting what he did with me, but then I never am. That's how I know it's God and not me. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Romans, uh, where am I? Okay, 14, 18. Okay, now, now, what does Jesus do? He starts to show them something. Came to pass, this is 11, as he went through Jerusalem, he passed through Galilee and Samaria, and he entered into a certain village. Uh, there he met 10 men who were lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices, and they said, Master, have mercy on us. Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, what did he say? Go show yourselves to the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Okay, now before I go on, go show yourselves to the priests is not something you say to a leper. Because if you aren't cleansed, you're defiling the priests and everything around. You do not go as a leper into, into the general population, and you certainly do not go to a priest. What is he doing? He's proclaiming the end result. <sighs> I'm like, I, I was like dumbfounded. But that's where that song comes from. I'm fighting a battle you have already won. We just sang that. I'm fighting a battle you have already won, guys. Huh? Yeah, give him a hand clap for crying out loud. He's doing this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He won the battle for us. He has already cleansed the leper. So when he goes to the priest, it manifests. That's faith in action. Get the picture? As they were walking it out, I wonder what he's trying to say about that. Yeah. As they were walking out, it just started manifesting. Sometimes you won't see it right away when you pray for somebody. But guess what? It's working because God is working. That's the faith he's asking for from a profitable servant. Not an unprofitable servant. Okay, we can speak to the mountain. You know, we can do our duty. We can, we can uh, heal the sick or we can, uh, you know, feed the poor and uh, we can do all those good things. The church does a lot of good things. All right. But it's not about good things. It's about God things. What does God want here? Are you going to be his son, his daughter, and fulfill his word and let it go out? Are you going to be walking it out so that leprosy can just fall off of you? Glory to God. It's a miracle. Yes, these miracles are going to be happening all over right now because we live in the time of the manifestation of the sons of God. When you believe in your heart, right? When you believe in your heart that he 
He died for you and raised, rose from the dead. See, he didn't just die for you. He rose from the dead. We're talking power here. I was going to preach on resurrection power, but I didn't do that. <laughs> I'd like to do that sometime, but I won't have time. Hallelujah. Because that power that raised Jesus from the dead is above any other power the enemy can possibly dream up. So don't think you're not going to win. You will. All right? But the interesting thing about this little story here is that, let me finish. Uh, okay, one of them, this is 15, 1750, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. He wasn't even a Jew. And Jesus answering said, were not ten cleansed, and where are the nine? And there are not found that return to give glory to God. I underline that, give glory to God. Give glory to God. Save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered the Pharisees and said, The kingdom of God comes not with observation, neither shall they say, Look over there or look over here, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Sons of God, the kingdom of God is within you. Don't be looking outside for things to happen from other folks or from the circumstances or that spectacular stuff because the devil's operating in that arena. You have to be connected in intimacy hearing the Holy Spirit and, and growing in grace, you know, in his power, and, and uh, he's going to use you, isn't he? Amen. Applause for God. Give him the applause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We want it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. And we thank you for it, Lord God, because you are the almighty, all-powerful God. And Jesus, you paid the price. That righteousness does not come from you, folks. It comes from him. We're, we're expected to walk in it, but we're walking it as we receive it from him. When you were born again, you received a new nature. You received a nature of righteousness. So you can stand tall and say, I'm righteous because God made me righteous. He cleansed me. Okay? And stay there. And it's good. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Mm. 17, 20, and 21, we got that. Okay, Luke 14. Oh, God, I hope I'm not running too far over. Okay. Where do I have to go? Okay, I got time. Okay, Luke 14. Got to connect these things. Luke 14, 27. We're still in the Gospels. Jesus is still teaching. Okay, we're just going a little bit um, before that. Okay, we talked about the unprofitable servant, but before that, he's still teaching about that. When you meditate the Word of God, ask the Holy Spirit, where does this message begin? And where does this message end? So I can read it over again and again and again until I get the whole picture inside of me. And then you'll be on good ground. Huh? Takes a little work, huh? You got to sit in the presence of God and get it. But it's good. Once you get it, you're on solid ground. Luke 14, 27 says this. Whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. <sighs> yeah, you got it. For which of you intending to build a tower sits not down first and counts the cost, whether he is, has sufficient to finish it? Lest perhaps after he has laid the foundation, he is not able to finish it. And all that behold or see it begin to mock him, 
saying, this man began to, be began to build and he was not able to finish. What are we talking about? The manifestation of you. Okay, we got to go further. We got to go deeper. We got to do a little bit more, okay? Because we're still unprofitable for the kingdom. We're not profitable. When someone comes up to you from another foreign country and they say, I've been, I've been denied this my whole life and somebody told me you have the answer, what are you going to say? I have the answer. I know him. He paid the price. But it says here, this man began to build and was not able to finish. If you don't have demonstration of power, if that isn't coming out of you, through that kind of faith, okay, we're talking about faith, not, must, not just when it's a seed, but as it's growing up inside of you. As we go in the way we are healed, that leper was healed. One of them came back. Only one? Yeah, only one. One out of ten are able to come back and glorify God. Ooh-wee. Yeah, that hits. Yeah, it does. One out of ten. And that's about the way it is right now. But you know what? We're going to manifest. Are you going to be one of those who are manifesting? I'm, I'm a son of God. I know it, and I'm moving into it. And I have everything I need to get there. And I'm going to be profitable. I don't want to be an unprofitable servant. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He loves you so much. He, this is God's message to you from his heart. He's saying, you're my family. You're my kids. You're the ones I raised up. You know, you're the ones I chose and delivered and paid for. You're the ones that are going to do this, guys. Like Esther said, for such a time as this, this is the hour. This is the time. We have to move into this place, and it's not enough just to be churchy. You know, it's not enough just to do good works. It's just not enough. Jesus told me that. He said, it's just not enough. I said, well, okay, Lord, what are you going to do? I'm going to do it. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Who's in charge here, the devil or Jesus? Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. King of kings and Lord of lords is taken over. Move aside, church. Move aside, religion. Move aside, culture. Move aside, demons. Get out of here because he's standing up now. He's taken over now. Hallelujah. And we're his children. We are the sons of God. And we're going to manifest and be profitable. Because the kingdom of God is where? Inside you. Now, they may not know it right now. A lot of Christians, they think, oh, they don't exist. They're just quiet. You know, they don't, they don't do nothing. You know, they sing a bunch of songs, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Things are changing inside of us. We're manifesting. Amen? We're becoming profitable for him because he needs to have this harvest. He's working on it. He's, he's doing it. Oh, I see God's hand everywhere. I see God's hand in that Trump thing. And I, I see God's hand in, uh, everywhere, you know, especially in this church. Glory to God. And so he's doing it. Amen. But he said, how does he do it? Verse 27, whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. We're going to have to mortify a little bit more. I, uh, when I went to Peru, I taught uh, fasting, um, and I brought with me my uh, ingredients, uh, which was a, a detox uh, bottle of bentonite. I don't know if you've heard of that. And then, um, and then I brought some psyllium, 
you know, little sh shelves that are ground up. And uh, I would fix everybody a drink, and we would go into a time of prayer, you know. And when we did that, it was uh, it was because God has called us into prayer. You don't just go there because. You go there with a reason and a purpose. And uh, sometimes he has an appointed time, appointed thing he wants to do in you or you or whatever. And uh, But you're, it's a time where you're getting intimate with God and you're saying, okay, you know, get rid of whatever's in me that you think is there that's not pleasing to you, that's making me unprofitable, you know. Get rid of it, Lord. I don't want it. I can do without that. I don't need to be that way. You know, hallelujah. And when you do that, you're humbling yourself before God. And God always honors a humble heart. Okay? He doesn't honor pride. He doesn't like all that bragging, you know. But uh, but a humble heart, you know, like Moses. They said Moses was the most humble of all men. And here he was leader of all those those people. But he had to deal with some stuff. You know, he struck the rock twice. He got angry. You know, these people for crying out loud. Yeah. Okay. I sinned. And he said, for that, you won't see the promised land. You'll see it from a distance. Is God harsh? Well, he's our father. He has a right to change us, you know, tell us what's right and what's wrong and what to do. Glory to God. Okay, so there's a dying here. Um, let's see. He says, uh, 16, John 16. Let's go there. Mark, John. These are all the Gospels. John 4, John 16. I just have to get these last scriptures out. 16, no, yeah. 16, 7 says this nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter the Holy Spirit will not come unto you and if I depart I will send him to you when he is come he will reprove the world of sin of what righteousness key word who was righteous that never sinned only one only one, Jesus Christ. Not Allah, no other man, no other God, no in, in, in any country in the world ever in history lived a righteous life except Jesus. So where do you get that righteousness? From him. He gives it to you in the new nature. When we're born again, you're a son of God. Amen. So we have it. But sometimes we have to be reminded, and the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, will do that. When the Holy Ghost has come, H, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment of sin, because they believe not of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more. So he's up in heaven in glory, and you're down here manifesting. Is that a good thing? Yeah. How be it when he, 13, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. Whatever he shall hear, that he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. He will glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. You find all this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, where it says, Spirit to spirit, he speaks. There's no other way to receive the voice of God. We have to discern the voices. We have to know that it's God speaking. He don't speak death, he speaks life. You know, sometimes he speaks strange things, you know, go spit in somebody's eyes, but you know. <laughs> whatever he says we're gonna do it because we know that it came from him hallelujah so stand up please I'd like to pray for you Lord Jesus we want to be manifest manifested we want you to use us we want to be profitable for the kingdom of God 
we want you to fill us again once again that's why we're going into the waters and getting cleansed that's why we're going into prayer that's why we fast lord mortify this flesh i don't want this flesh to be in control of my life i want you to be in control of my life take over now raise your hands to god take over now take my life i trust you give me that faith that makes me a profitable servant i want you to change me and give me your nature of righteousness i want to walk in that lord i want to be your son totally manifested that you have joy in me and i have joy in you and we have total liberty to run to each other abba father and say i love you i love you i love you father god you are good you are wonderful now have your way in me lord and from now on lord god i know you're leading us many of us into new places you give me what i need show me and i surrender to you now if anybody here does not have the baptism in the holy spirit and does not speak in tongues i want to invite you to come down and get it because there are people here who will lay hands on you and help you but all of this is done by the spirit now most of you are uh, already uh, baptized in the holy ghost but some of you are not uh, you know, he's baptizing us again and again, so that's okay, too, you know. But um, because I was, I was surprised to say I want to baptize you again. But see, that's what's going on here. You're going into the water. You're going into deeper places. And, and, uh, uh, I, and God is wanting you to, to have everything as a son of God. This is sonship inheritance, what you're receiving. You're receiving from God himself. We're just vessels that he can use at any time, at any point in time, to deliver what he wants because it's his love that changes us. You can't be changed by, by anything we want. You have to be changed by the power of God itself. So I invite you now, please come forward. If you have any need for this power, this manifestation in your life, and you do not have it, I want you to come forward. Now, some of you may have received the, the baptism before, but you're not really speaking in tongues and you want another outpouring. So pour out on me huh? and, and we'll, we'll let you go free because, you know, praying in tongues, is it just comes out of your insides. It, it, it's not something that you can dream up because it's like it's like little kids he said be like a little child and come unto me because that kind of faith as a little child will receive everything i have and that's what he wants from his children just that innocent take me yeah love me give it to me i want your love hallelujah so we need to enter in enter into the waters and enter into the power the power of god is not to be feared in the sense that uh, to make you afraid. When Isaiah said, woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips, it's because he knew the holiness of God. And as you approach the holiness of God, you approach him with reverence, you know? And reverence is a good thing. We definitely wanna reverence God. So I invite you to come up. If you're lacking anything in your life, and you want a fresh outpouring or someone to lay hands on you or you want to, I don't know, whatever God is stirring inside of you, but I want to invite you to come up because it's when we step into these things that we receive. It takes a decision from each and every one of you. Me too, you know. I mean, God showed me some things that were pretty crazy and I said, I, uh, is that you? <laughs> and then, I had to make a decision. Okay, God, if that's you, I want it. I want it. Hallelujah. Nobody wants your harm. Everybody wants you to go forward and get what it, your inheritance is. We all do. Because the children of God 
are manifesting at this time. This is the time to be ready. Be ready for the revival because it's coming whether you like it or not. God is moving in the earth. But if you want to be a part of it, then you need to get ready. And that's what this is all about. He's not manifesting, uh, you know, anything else. He's manifesting you. It's all about you because he loves you. Jesus walked alone. That was hard. The disciples, there were only 12 of them, you know, they followed. And then there was a few more after that. But some of them went away. They were offended. They thought, oh, I don't understand this. And they walked away. So it's your decision. Are you going to enter in or not? So I'm asking you, you know, come forth and receive, all right? Praying in tongues is a rest. Isaiah 28 says that. When you, when you pray in tongues, it may sound kind of silly at first, you know, but what it really is is surrender. I, I, I get a picture in my mind of floating on the water, you know, just letting God have his way. And there's a flow around me and, you know, gentle noises. And I know that he's in charge. And it's so, so good. So good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So if, if that's you, I want, I want the prayer team to come, to just come up here real quick. All the, if you're on the prayer team, you should uh, come on up. Come on up. So if that's you and you, and you, and you need a, you need a touch, you need to, you know the Holy Spirit. You know she's talking about speaking in tongues. It says these signs shall follow those that believe in my name. They'll lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. They'll cast out devils. They'll speak in new tongues. It's, it's for believers. It's not to be afraid of. I, I've known this when I when I when I started speaking, praying in the Spirit, and allowing God to to, to give me the, the, that heavenly language. Things started shifting and changing in my life. And uh, so if that's you, again, I want to encourage you to come up. Um, thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you right now. God, you know, we know God's doing it. He's doing a new thing. And if he uses peanut butter, he can use peanut butter. If he uses spitting in somebody's eye, he can spit in somebody's eye. If he's using the waters to, 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 to people get in the water and get healed, then he can use the water. We just got to get out of our boxes and say, Lord, if it's you, we say yes. Come on, we have, we, have a, we have discernment. We have the Holy Spirit. But he wants us to break out of every box that we've put him in and saying, you know what, I am, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Amen. So just open yourself up to God. And if you, if you, need, if you need prayer for anything, uh, just come on up. If not, um, that's fine as well. I'll give you a few seconds. Then I'm going to step into something else real quick before we dismiss. Anybody need prayer this morning? Okay. So where's, I, want our, I want our pastors to come up. I want Pastor Jared, Pastor Harley, uh, and I want the prayer team to come up as well. And I just want us to surround this group right here. If you guys don't mind, you guys just step forward a little bit. We just want to pray a covering over, a blessing over you guys on your travels, on your ministry, on what God's doing in your life. So we, I want our, just our prayer team to kind of gather around them. I need the church just to put, lift your hands towards them. And we're just going to speak blessing. We're going to speak an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that their lives will never be the ch never be the same. Yet as they give it out, Lord God, that they'll be filled up to overflowing. Lord, out of, the, out of their bellies will flow rivers of living water in the name of Jesus. We speak the blessing of heaven over them, over their ministry, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, just fill their cups this morning, Lord God. Let their cups run over this morning. Let there be an outpouring of your Spirit upon them this morning, Lord God. A fresh anointing, Father, in Jesus' name. Revelation in Jesus' name. Father, open doors, shut doors. Let their footsteps be ordered of the Lord. Every divine appointment, Lord, to be, but they would not miss it in Jesus' name. Father, they become mighty men and women of God. Lord, mighty men, mighty women. Father, Father, for this generation, Lord, you're raising them up, Lord God. We thank you for them. We bless them. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, rest on them. Rest on them. Rest on them. Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name, we bless them, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for their lives, for their sacrifices. Lord God, we say thank you. Come, Holy Spirit. Blessings, Lord. Strength, Lord. Courage, courage. Fresh boldness and courage. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Give them dreams and visions, downloads from heaven. Father, give them words of wisdom and knowledge, understanding. Mm. Let their spirits be so in tune, so in tune with yours. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Bless you, Lord. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. Let's give him another shout of praise this morning. We praise you, Jesus. We love you, Father God. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for revival, Lord God, that's breathing across this land, Lord God. Breathing across this land. Let it flow through the young people. Let it flow through the old people, Lord God. Let it, Lord, let it cause a stirring, Lord God. Oh, Lord, across this nation, Father God, that this nation will have an outpouring of the Spirit of God, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against this nation. Father God, that there's going to be a people rise up, Lord God, oh, Lord, that are going to stand and lift up a standard of righteousness, a standard of your kingdom and of your glory and your power, Father God, that will shake the very heart of this nation in Jesus' name. Come on, let's come on, church. Let's just pray for a few more minutes. Father, we call this nation back to God. We call America back to, Father, back to God. That, Lord, we will come running back to Jesus. A revival, Lord, in all 50 states, Father God. Revival in all 50 states. Father, people are God are praying. There's a, Father, there's a cry going up, Father God, of the glory of God covering America again. Shaking the very foundation, Father God. Bringing the enemy, Lord, to his knees. And lifting up, the Father, the glory of God, the righteous, Father, of the kingdom of God over this nation again. Father, we pray for the heart of our country. Save our land. Save our nation. Save the children. Save us, Father God. Save us, Father God. Come on, church. Save us. Save us. Deliver us. Rescue us. Oh, Father God, show yourself strong again, Father, in America like never before. Let the, the, let the universities, like in, as Asbury and other universities, let the fire continue to burn. Let it increase, Father God. Let there be a Father pouring out on the campuses of the glory of God that's uncontrollable, uncontainable, Lord God. Pour it out, Lord God. Pour out the glory, Lord Jesus. Pour out your Father, your Spirit on all flesh in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And for this, we give you all the praise and all the glory forever and ever and ever. And everybody, everybody said, amen. We love you guys. So glad you're here this morning. Take Jesus outside these doors and be the light. Amen. You're dismissed. We love you.